welcome back to the channel so today we're exploring something quite magical so stay with us don't forget to subscribe give us a thumbs up and let's get exploring <music> So welcome back everyone. So today, um, this is a two part video. So you remember last week we did say that we were gonna come back and show you some more of Wren. We are gonna show more of Wren, so don't worry, stay tuned. Um, but also we got a message through from one of our subscribers saying that there was this place basically near where we were, we had to check it out. So we thought we'd come here first. So we are at, what's it called? The place we're going to, I'm not sure what the village is called, but the place we're going to is La Grotte de Diable. Which basically translates as the Devil's Cave. So we do have some facts, as always, and I hopefully we'll get some great shots. So stay tuned. We'll show you more of Ren later. But until then, let's go meet the devil. <laughs> the wildlife around here seems to be getting a lot weirder, because on the drive here... Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's loads. On the drive here, there was a donkey walking oh, down the middle so of the road cute. and now there's a field just here i don't know if you can see it on the camera probably not probably not there's chickens just just walking lots of wild they're just free ranging they're not wild they're like wild chickens they're not wild they might be wild they're not <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue with our adventure there's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not same for me Standing by the shore While you're on the open sea Cannot take this end So as you just saw, we came through the village and um, we're taking a little bit of a diversion. So this isn't part of the route. But we've just seen signs for what's the Chemin de Croix, which basically translates as a tractor coming. I can do this in time. It basically translates as um, Station of the Cross or Route of the Cross. Um, so it's part of a pilgr pilgrimage as part of a ceremony that takes place on Lent and on Good Friday. So there's some uh, doors up here. We're going to head up into the woods. Oh, I can see the cross there. So we'll head up and, and see. And there's 15 crosses. 15 crosses to go and see. So. We'll go and see how many we can find. We're not sure how far the walk is, but then we'll rejoin the route and head back towards the cave. Look at that. Just in time for the tractor. The open sea cannot take this anymore. The dreams are not the same for me. Chemin La Croix. Chemin La Croix. Chemin La Croix. It's quite an amazing place and there's so many crosses but we only saw three or four of them. It goes right up the hill so we're going to try and rejoin our route and find Devil's Cave. So 
So we've had a look in the church. So I think it's time for a bit of fun fact time. Is it a fun fact? Yeah, I suppose, yes, it is a fun fact. So in the winter of 1842 slash 1843, Sister Martha, one of the nuns in the area, was down on this little tributary of the River Veer doing her laundry and a sheet flew away from her and she fell into the river and it paralysed her from the waist down. She couldn't move her legs. So the story goes that she dragged herself back to like her mother house where the Sister Superior, who I think was Sister Mary Magdalene, or Mer Mary, she cured her and she was then able to walk again. So legend has it that this, this sister was, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Same. A miracle worker. Oh, okay. She worked miracles. But we found a book about Sister Martha. She did actually exist in the 1800s. Yeah, it's quite an interesting fact. Interesting fact. Yeah. And this little bridge that we're at now, if I just sort of 180, the bridge here, so there used to be a station, so the train used to come all the way through here, past the church, and off into the distance. It is a very tiny little village to have a train station, but there's huge buildings and stuff. It's really quite... All of these buildings that are sort of here, along the side of this road here, they're all empty. They're just sort of... They're derelict, but they're well kept. So I'm not quite sure what the story with that is, but. Yeah, it's a very well maintained village. Well done. That was slightly disappointing. the Grotte de Diable and it's a blooming big hill so off we hike Woo! let's go okay so as you can see I've lost the jumper the, the, um, the route up here as you saw it's pretty steep to make it even worse when you get to this part it's absolutely mental it's so difficult to get down to. Definitely don't attempt this if you're, you know, you're not able, shall I say, or, you know, you're quite physically fit. I mean, we just made it, climbing down. I mean, I'm not, I'm not physically fit, but I am only 30, and I only just made it down. But this is what we came down here for. A hole in the wall. <laughs> so, I can't remember his name. I'll have a look on my bit of paper in a moment. Sorry, I look a bit dishevelled. <laughs> there was a man. We took a picture of his statue down at the bottom. He lived in the little village that we've just been to and he used to climb up here and use this as a retreat for reading and writing. You'd need a blooming retreat after hiking up that hill, but it's not a particularly nice place. No, it's the floor is, is wooden. It's like a wooden plinth that goes out over the hill and it's very rotten. It's not the nicest of places, but on the upside, look at the view. Yeah, it's an amazing view. It's an incredible view. Worth a visit if you can. Um, if you can see, we've come from the path down here. Like I wouldn't recommend bringing children. No, not push It's chairs. a really steep hill with a sheer drop on the side. It is if you're very into your hiking. Just sit in the cave. gonna sit in the cave. And then, back down again. So I said that this place was built by somebody that lived in the local village. He actually owned the village. He was the Justice for Peace, but I can't remember his name. And he built it in, <laughs> in 1850, he had it commissioned for the stone to be carved. In 1944, refugees from Cherbourg, 
following World War II came here as a place to rest whilst they were awaiting liberation. Okay, so while Jess just sort of checks out which way we need to go, I thought I'd just let you know exactly why it's called um, the Devil's Cave. It's, according to the sign, it's a mystery as to why it's called yeah. that. But from doing a little bit of research, sort of folklore says, basically, farmers in the area noticed that animals were going missing from this area. So they stumbled upon the cave by accident. And when they went inside, there were thousands of dead animals. Um, so it's said that they fell to their death. They were lured into the cave and fell to their death, which is that little stepping stone bit that we came down. How true that is, that's, that's obviously for you to decide. But it's an interesting little mystery, a myth and legend of the area. So we're going to carry on our walk, hopefully loop back round to the village where the car's parked. Let's get going. Okay, so we're on the second to last approach to the car now, back into the village. Um, amazing walk. It is... 3.7 so it's about four miles walk yeah it um, said online 5.7 kilometers but i think that's wrong yeah so around about four miles um very hilly very muddy so muddy definitely come prepared walking boots um preferably waterproof ones yeah as we found out mine have a big hole in them so um we're going to leave our vlog there for this week sort of <laughs> so you might remember that we had some more footage of ren to show you from last week so we're going to put that in now. But uh, before we do that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much uh, for subscribing. Our subscribers have gone up again this week, which is wonderful. So if you're new, please consider subscribing. Give us a thumbs up and ring the little bell to notify you. Um, new video every Friday. So I will put in the footage now of Ren and we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. So last week, you remember we were exploring Wren. We are back here again for another week. Stay tuned though, because we have got so much to show you guys. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And let's go and explore. Here's to the good days. Here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't want to fight no more, because I don't feel the need no more, no. Just want to make it stop. Maybe it's something in the water. Or maybe we just hit the end of the road Right now it doesn't even matter It's too late not to let it go and So during the Second World War Wren suffered heavily from three German aircrafts which hit ammunition Ammunition? Ammunition Am Ammunition trains that were parked alongside French and British troop trains and a thousand people died the next day, German troops entered the city. Later, there was heavy bombing from the US and UK Air Forces in March and May of 1943, and again in June 1944, causing thousands of deaths. And there was also a prisoner of war camp here that held around 50,000 Germans. That's crazy. In a city that only had about 100,000 inhabitants at the time. Right now, it doesn't even matter. Get